Hey guys. Good evening. Um, hope you're having a great fall so far. Uh, but I wanted to kind of go over some an aspect of home brewing that a lot of people don't do, but then many people do do. So it's uh, it's instead of having to bottle your beer, you can always keg your beer. So that's what I got here is one of my five gallon corny kegs. Uh, these are actually uh, old soda kegs that they used uh, for Pepsi and Coca-Cola uh, to put pre-carbonated soda in and then they would deliver these to the restaurants but they've gotten away from using these and so many home brewers have actually uh, <laughs> taken to them because we can use them to carbonate our beer and put it on tap using these. Not much to them, you've got your gas in on this side, you got your liquid out on this. On the uh, liquid out, there's actually a long dip tube inside this thing that I'll show you. And on this side is where the gas goes in. It's just a short tube to let the uh, CO2 go in. And when I get done filling, cleaning this and sanitizing it and filling it, uh, when I put it in the fridge uh, in my kegerator, it'll, it'll start to carbonate as the beer cools down. So that's what we're gonna do today. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take off the just a regular, what size is this? Uh, takes a regular deep socket, a 7 8 inch deep socket. I just put it on top and I just kind of give it a turn to loosen it. Another thing is, there's still some gas in this. Oops. Bleed the gas. There's a little valve on top and just bleed the gas. Go ahead and take this off. These kegs. Uh, cost anywhere from fifty to seventy-five dollars for these used soda kegs. Um, but so this is that dip tube I was talking about. Just a little little gas inlet tube. And it's got a little washer in there, and these get worn out, and you have to replace them. So I'm set that over here, and this is also the uh, end valve. And there's a little poppet valve in here. I just have to take a screwdriver and pop this out. I'm gonna set this over here. Let's go ahead and do the other side, the liquid side. Just, just ratchet it off. Oops. See, this is the poppet valve. This is what sits inside of here. It just popped right out. But it, uh, it's, it's spring loaded, so when you put your quick connect on, your ball lock, it'll. Uh, push down on this and allow flow. So set this over here too. This is the lid. You just basically lift up the lever and sometimes they stick but this actually popped right off and it's just got a little gasket on it. We'll take the gasket off. Set it aside. And in the lid I always like to take the valve out. Sometimes they're it's stuff to get out, you know, as long as it's been in there. But every time I uh, wash a keg, I always take this out so I can get in here and wash this, wash these real good. And let me get a set of pliers for this part. Okay, so I had to go get a set of pliers. You take these pli just some pliers, you kind of just slightly pinch it and pull. And this is the dip tube. This is where all the beer flows up to your tap. And it's got a little washer on it too. And I usually replace these every two or three fills or whatever because they get kind of chewed up over time. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you're gonna see in there, which you probably can't, but there's a lot of yeast settled at the bottom from refrigerating this because whenever you make beer there's always going to be yeast in it and when you refrigerate it, homebrew anyways, um, the yeast will start to kind of settle down to the very bottom and uh, so you get that sludge on the bottom but you don't, you don't ever drink it because it kind of sticks there while this cake stays cold uh, unless you give it a good shake and then you'll get it suspended again. But uh, big brewers, uh, a lot of craft brewers and all the big brew houses and they will actually um but uh I'm trying to think of the word 
they'll pasteurize it with hot water and it'll kill the yeast so the yeast doesn't continue to grow any because you always have some yeast kind of suspend in your beer when you're bottling it and so whenever you pour a home brew in a bottle you want to pour that into a glass slowly so you don't disturb the bottom sediment in your bottle but this saves a lot of time against bottling because this is one vessel you have to clean sanitize and fill and if you're bottling you're going to be bottling about 48 12 ounce bottles or you're going to be bottling about 24 22 ounce bottles so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some oxy clean together and i'm going to go ahead and clean this out and then i'm also going to fill my sink up with sanitizer afterwards and sanitize everything and then when i get done with that um, we will go to the beer filling part and uh, we're going to be kegging an oktoberfest uh, you may recall i made a video earlier where i i was brewing a oktoberfest and it was just kind of an informal video with the crappy vertical shots so uh but that's i'll show you that beer here in a minute once i get done uh, washing and sanitizing all this stuff. Alright, so I got all my sink full of oxygen here. I'm just kind of cleaning all these parts. This is the seal to the uh, <clears throat> to the race lid. We call it a racetrack lid because it's kind of oval like a racetrack. But I usually just give it a good rub down and some oxyclean. And just throw it over here. And I got a little toothbrush for cleaning these inlets I'm just going to give it a you know, OxyClean is a miracle um, cleaner so most brewers use OxyClean or PBW um, same stuff pretty much so yeah we're gonna just kind of slosh around it inside the drip tube here and I just set it over here and I have a stopper in the rinse sink because I don't want to lose any small parts. And uh, small parts like these, like my gas tube. And the gas tube is pretty clean already. A race lid. I've took the uh, pressure relief valve off, so I'm just giving it a good wash. I just kind of take the toothbrush and just get in the grooves with it. And I'm just kind of get a good little scrub down on the inside. Good. One more dip over here. My little washers, these are the parts you don't you can lose down the drain, so let's throw that over here. And there's my uh, pressure release valve. Just a spring loaded little valve. And I'll just give it a little scrub. And then uh you kind of have to fish around in here. These are what I was talking about earlier that was inside the, uh, that was inside of here. Oops. <laughs> Slippery. Because inside of here, they just go up inside there like so. And when you screw it on, it pushes them in and locks them in. Sometimes they fall right out, sometimes they don't. So, anyways, yeah, these are pop it valves. And they have a certain size depending on which kegs you buy. So. And here's the other one. <laughs> so yeah. And make sure I don't have anything else down in here. Oh yeah. Here's the other valve. Or post, as most people call them. And every now and then these go, these little rings will get worn out. I have yet to ever replace these, but uh, apparently these go bad over time. You just pop them off and put new seals on. And I didn't go through showing washing the keg because the keg's pretty much just a vessel. You just slosh the cleaner around in it, hot oxy clean, and then uh, just empty it. So I'm going to go ahead, rinse all this stuff off, and then uh, I will fill my sink with sanitizer and I'll show you how I sanitize everything. Okay, so I've washed everything. I have it actually over here on a set of paper towels. And uh, what I'm going to do next is take all these parts and put them back in here. But I'm going to use some iota for. Most people use a product called Star Sand, but this is a little cheaper, and I like that it doesn't foam a lot like the iota or the Star Sand does. So I usually put a capful in here. You know, you do a, a two capfuls to five gallons. I'm going to do one capful, and I wait till it's 
just got a slight tint to it and it looks like iodine because it is iodine based and you just let this fill up Cap it off. And I just have to rinse this bottle because sometimes it'll run down. Set that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, fill up. I usually fill up to about yay high. And then uh, throw all my parts in there right now. I'm going to throw my main lid seal in there. Throw the lid in there. Now all we're doing is letting this stuff just kind of sit in there for about 10 minutes or so. So it's good and sanitized. That way uh, all bacteria will be dead. Even the washer going in there, I'll just put everything in there. Because nothing's worse than uh, getting your beer infected with a bacteria. Uh, you can kind of splash it on the dip too much. sink isn't quite deep enough to uh, kind of get it exposed at least. I'm just going to rest it on stainless steel. And uh, what I'll do is, like I said, let this sit. Okay, that's about where you want it. You want it to have a slight tint to it. That way you know it's still a good ratio of water to iota for. So now I'm going to take my keg. And we're going to put a cap full inside of it. Just pour it in there. And just rinse it off over here. Just cap it. See what I mean? Runs down the sides. So I like to rinse my bottle off. Stuff does stain. It will stain. So <laughs> now I'm just gonna fill my keg up with about two and a half gallons of water. And this is how I sanitize the inside of my keg. Way better than bottling. Plus you can force carbonate the beer and have it ready in like two days. Or you can have it ready the same day if you're, you know, aggressive enough about it. You can shake the keg and get the CO2 to mix in. Once the keg's nice and cold, you can just kind of shake it and have full carbonated beer in one day. But I usually just put my uh, CO2 on 30 PSI for the first day and then 20 for the second day and then I just dial it down to regular serving pressure, which I keep my serving pressure on my beers around 10 for pressure. Okay, so now I've filled my keg with about two and a half gallons of uh, sanitizer to about this mark. It was like the midway point on the keg. What I like to do is take it and just kind of roll it and let that sanitizer just get all over the inside of the top of the keg. And, uh, and then just kind of pour it in with the rest of my stuff. Just like that. Okay, so everything's been sanitized. So what I'm gonna do now is put the posts on. Uh, but before I put the posts on, I gotta put my dip tube back in and I gotta put my gas tube back in. So let's go ahead and do that. And remember these little washers I was telling you about? That are easy to lose and sometimes you have to replace them after a while. Um, I like to take the washer put it on but I also have this stuff here. It's a food grade lube. It's <laughs> it's called keg lube and uh, basically I just take a very small amount of it and I put it all over the washer. Actually I should just take the washer off and just basically just rub it between my fingers and uh, get that lubricant all over the washer and uh, what this does, what the whole point of keg lube is, it keeps your parts from drying out for one, and two, it uh, helps with a good seal. So we want to put this on the 
gas side in so we're just going to stick that back down in there just like so and then we're going to take the other washer put some lube all over it you know what I'm saying <laughs> so anyways we're going to just slide it on I keep a paper towel handy for this because this stuff is so messy but it's food grade so it won't hurt you if you ingest it so I usually just put it on the end like that because it's a pain to get it to slide all the way up. And I just put the tube on and I just push the tube in. And that washer just stays right where it needs to. And I just kind of make sure that lead is all around just like that. And keep the paper towel handy to wipe off the lube off your hands. Just like, you know, never mind. So, <laughs> um, now let's put the poppet valve back on. This is the small one, and the small one is on the gas side, I believe. So I'm gonna flip this over. Just hand tighten it for now. And I'm gonna take the uh, larger one and put it on the large side. And you see all those poppet valves are, are right in the middle like they're supposed to be? If you put the, these on and the poppet valves aren't centered, you'll break your poppet valve. Now, it's not the end of the world. You just have to go buy new ones and they're not cheap. I think they're about $7 a piece. Uh, I just found out from my local home brew shop that they do make a universal one, which is a lot easier to put in. You don't got to worry about breaking it because it's basically just a seal piece and a spring. We'll go ahead and tighten, tighten this down as, good as, as snug as I can. Good and snug like that. And do the other side. Oh, slipping a little bit here. It's on there pretty snug, <laughs> obviously. So, only thing left to do is put the lid on. But we can't do that until we fill it with beer. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the Oktoberfest I brewed in my blah 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 brew video. And uh, it's quite clear already and ready to go. Just got to put it in the keg. I use an auto siphon setup here where basically all I'll do is give it a few pumps and it'll siphon right into my keg. Let me show you my keg here. See if you can see that. There's the keg. So what I'm gonna do is give it a couple pumps up here. And I use the sanitizer, I use to sanitize all the cake parts. I'm just using the sanitizer for this part as well. So I'm just gonna give it a couple good pumps. And then go, there goes the beer. And we'll fill this keg all the way up until we get to the very bottom of the fermenter. And then I will cap it. And I'll show you that in a second. Guys, just look at the color of that. It's a nice, light, lightish brown color to it. Uh, it looks darker because, you know, it's a greater volume. This, uh, this looks really nice and clear and good. And it's gonna even get clearer than this once it uh, is in the keg and I cold crash it. And what I mean when I say cold crash is, cold crash is just a term used for chilling the beer so that it, all the yeast just kind of falls out of it and falls to the bottom. So when I, you know, draw my first, you know, pint of this beer, I'm gonna have to throw it out because it's gonna have a lot of yeast because the dip tube's gonna be down there and the yeast is gonna be settled around a dip tube. You usually only have to throw out like a, one, a half a pint to a pint and then you're good to go because the rest of the yeast will be away from the draw tube. So uh, that's what we're doing. Just letting this thing empty out into the keg. Now we're at the halfway point of it. And I always take this off too, because I don't need it anymore. Oh yeah. Now she's naked. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a halfway right now. So we've got about two and a half gallons here. And that's about 48 beers. So you decide to get into this hobby, or if you're already in, in the hobby, then you already know what I'm talking about. But those who are thinking about getting into it, you can 
get five gallons each time you brew and it's just usually similar to what you can buy in a store but it's, sometimes it's even better so I strongly encourage anybody who has thought about brewing their own to get out there and do it because it's it's very rewarding so I know I said we get back to when I put the cap on but I wanted to show this because this is the relaxation part just relax just relax anyways <laughs> okay so the beer is all out of here and it's in here so now I gotta get this tubing out and we'll put our lid on so let's go ahead and pull the tubing out there's gonna be some beer still on the line a little bit and a little bit of air bubbles and whatnot that's why I got a towel on the floor in case anything drips. It drips onto the towel or else my wife will not be happy about that. So, so now just take the tubing, throw it in the sink. Take the lid, I put it in long ways like so. I pull up, I kind of have to kind of keep it level. And I put lube all over the seal too, so it makes it kind of slippery, but it also gives it a great seal. So uh, let's head out to the garage and purge this thing and get some CO2 on it. Okay guys, I dialed my uh, CO2 regulator up to 30 PSI and we're going to go ahead and put some pressure on this bad boy. So let's take a look at here. Here's my kegerator. This is a pumpkin ale I brewed this year. Um, Ignore all the ice, it goes away. It's about to defrost. So, anyways, remember I was talking about the gas in that valve here. Let's turn this around. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Now, actually, what I wanna do first is loosen this, right? Did you hear that? I don't know if you guys could hear that, but that was my gas going this is to make sure I seat this right just lock it the pressure alone will hold the lid up but this is just a precautionary thing so now we can I don't know if y'all saw the air bubbles in my uh, beer line when I was transferring the beer to the keg but we're gonna purge it we want to get as much of the air out and then the COT will push more oxygen up so that's what we're doing right now. We're just purging this. I do this for about, I don't know, 15 times or so, and then I feel like I've done a good job, and then I just leave it be. So. And you can smell the beer <laughs> smell coming out of it already. It's gonna be a good beer, I think. I may do a review on it after I'm done with it, after it's ready. I don't know, depends on how I feel. All right, that should be good. Now I gotta put it in here. So, let's see if I can do this while holding the camera. Just kinda push it in there, just like that. They look so happy together, don't they? I think I still have about this much pumpkin ale, so I'm gonna be drinking pumpkin ale through to December probably. Unless I get some buddies over here to help me suck it down. But uh yep. All good, and I'll give it two more pumps. Ta-da! And uh that's it. About 50 I have a thermostat in here too, or thermometer, not a thermostat. It tells me what the temp is in here. Right now it's 57 because I just opened this up. So let's go ahead and close her up. And this is my tap handles, as y'all seen in other videos, I'm sure. Perlick taps, the best. And uh, pumpkin ale, yes. Honey ale, no more. Got to change it to Oktoberfest. And I always like to write the ABV down on here. So, uh, anyways, uh, I hope you guys uh, learned from this and enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sweating because it's Houston. <laughs> so, um, what I want to know is uh what do you guys think about the audio now i don't know i got a new mic in 
and it's a shotgun mic so it's like right in front of me here and uh, I did away with the lapel mics I'm trying to get away from those it's just more of a pain in the ass but uh, if you like this video uh, if you like my channel please like and subscribe it, it helps get my videos out to everyone else and if you hate me then uh, I mean to each their own but uh, I'm here to entertain so uh, I hope you guys have a good evening or good day or whatever it is and uh, I'm in the process of editing the brisket video right now and I'll be putting that up it's an epic fail video so don't expect anything spectacular out of it other than if you just want to see some Kamado tips and tricks then there are good tips and tricks in there the fail wasn't because uh, of what I did to the Kamado was because I failed to take the meat off and it was ready. So I'm pretty good with cooking on the Kamado now. So please subscribe and like. Thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll see you later.